Psychedelic Spotlight presents Spotlight on Cybin. What is the vision of Cybin? You know, we've always had a vision to turn uh, psychedelics into therapeutics, and uh, that sounds simple, but it's really quite complex. Uh, if it was simple, uh, these powerful molecules would be medicines already for decades ago. Uh, so it's quite a challenge, and that's really what we've been doing to optimize uh, the power in this, uh, the psychedelics and turn them into therapeutics that can be used for the masses, mm -hmm. for hundreds of millions of people that, that are suffering from mental health disorders. Yeah, because hundreds of millions of people are suffering. Like when you look at PTSD, when you look at depression, anxiety, the list goes on. There's so much un unmet need out there, so much suffering that is happening that if our thesis that psychedelics can help turns out to be true, then we can help these people, and you, being the leader of a leading psychedelic medicines company, can help these people. So I guess, off the bat, I'd like to say thank you almost for your service type of thing. Thank you for doing your part to try to make the world a little bit of a better place. You know, it's really exciting. And I've been in pharmaceuticals for 30 years, and part of the reason for doing that is to help people, but I don't think at any point in my, in my career I've ever had an opportunity to help so many people in such a meaningful way. Uh, it really is transformative what we're working on. So your company is working mostly on psilocybin and then derivatives of psilocybin. We'll get to those in a moment, but let's start with the, the big one, psilocybin. What is some of this data, some of this evidence that you're talking about that shows that it could be helpful to heal people? So uh, great data today from the COMPASS study, by the way, uh, indicating that, uh, confirming that psilocybin is, has really powerful efficacy. Um, what we announced yesterday uh, was data around our CYB3 program, uh, which is a deuterated analog of psilocybin. So we're taking the benefits of psilocybin and we're modifying uh, the molecule in order to uh, create a better experience for patients. So psilocybin itself has lots of potential benefits, but as you point out and your company points out, it also has some strong negatives or mm. some limiting factors behind it. So what would some of those limiting factors be? Yeah, the limiting factors are that uh, it's very long acting. When you look at uh, some animal data, we presented oral psilocybin at four hours. <coughs> excuse me, at four hours post dosing is still going strong. So patients have a very, very long duration, and that means uh, whole days in the clinic, eight-hour clinic days. Um, and now I think that some patients might be willing to make that that investment, that time investment. Mm -hmm. But it's not really just about the patient; it's about the payers and the providers and the infrastructure that's needed. It makes the whole process really quite expensive. And what else uh, are problems with classical psilocybin? Well, uh, the other another very another issue is variability. So, uh, and we've known this for a couple of decades that, that uh, d people react differently to psilocybin. You know, one individual. Uh, might have a mild effect and another individual might have a very profound effect on the same dose. And that's because of psilocybin is a prodrug and it is metabolized into to psilocin. Uh, and we all have different metabolisms. Mind just giving a very quick definition of what a prodrug pro is for anybody who might not be aware? Yeah, it's, it's really an agent that is then converted into the active drug. So psilocybin okay. doesn't work as a psychedelic, psilocin works as a psychedelic, and psilocybin is converted to psilocin in the body. Um, and that conversion varies between you and me and, and everybody mm -hmm. else. And, but when you're, uh, when you're creating a therapeutic, uh, you really want it to be consistent and have very narrow levels of variability so you can have a predictable response. Mm -hmm. It's challenging for physicians if they don't know how you're going to respond. So we got the long duration effect, we got the variability of effect, how it affects some people much more than other people. Any other issues with psilocybin? It takes quite a long time to kick in as okay. well, an hour, an hour, a quarter maybe for, for peak effect. So if we can reduce the time of onset, if we can reduce it to total duration, if we can reduce that variability, make it a very efficient treatment, but still keep all the powerful benefits, then I think we really have a therapeutic that we can make really accessible. And at the end of the day, I'm talking about the molecule, but this is really about patients. And our goal, as I said at the beginning, is to try and make these treatments as accessible as possible. And I believe that comes from getting broad reimbursement. And these, this profile that we're talking about, I think leads to a higher level of reimbursement and therefore more access for patients. What do you mean by reimbursement? Well, at some point, somebody's got to pay for these treatments. Okay, that's a, a government, an yes. insurance company. <laughs> it's not likely to be the individual in most cases. Mm -hmm. um, look, if you're wealthy, you can fly off to a retreat today and have these experiences for yourself. But most people can't do that. So let's make these treatments as accessible as we can. So CYB003, if it works, 
has a shorter duration of effect, it has less variability, and it has a quicker onset action. So it is kind of counteracting or the three main issues that we have with psilocybin. Where are we right now in the process of actually getting this to patients? Making lots of progress, actually. Uh, we've, on, in our total programs, we've run 74 preclinical studies in the last year. Uh, it's a phenomenal amount. We've got about 10 left to go with CYB3. All of them are, are ongoing and in process, so we'll be done with those in the first quarter of 2022. And that means filing an IND uh, or a CTA with the FDA, and we'll, we'll also go in the UK, first of all. Uh, in the second quarter of next year. And that would be for a phase one safety trial in humans? Absolutely, which so, we expect to start right after that in the UK and the US. Okay, so in these animal models that you've been uh, doing it originally on, we've seen no uh, indication that we'll see any sort of adverse events that we don't see in psilocybin. It looks equally as safe as psilocybin. It looks equally as safe as psilocybin. We've seen the same toxicology and the same receptor binding, the same activity. Uh, so no differences there, just change the, the, the profile of it uh, as it comes in and out of the body. Basically. Okay, so phase one trials next year. I know that the FDA process to get through phase one, two, and three is a very long process, kind of optimistic scenario. What are we looking at here? Five years, would you say? Yeah, I think five years is a reasonable estimate, uh, but it's hard to say because yeah. many things can affect that. Uh, we might see great results and, and we might end up with a fast track status. Um, we, you know, we might have opportunities uh, to uh, run parallel uh, studies. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will see. Um, I, nobody knows at this stage what FDA or other regulators are going to ask for at the phase three level. But um, now that Compass has published their data, we'll, I think we'll probably get some idea of what FDA is expecting. Do you ever worry about any sort of backsliding when it comes to regulatory approval of psychedelics? Or do you think that the in industry as a whole has essentially reached escape velocity? And assuming the trials show positive data, we're good to go. You don't worry about any sort of political interference at any time? Um, no, I, no? I, I don't. You think we've I don't reached actually. escape velocity? I, I, I do think we have. Okay. And I think that the, the, uh, the efficacy data is so compelling. I think we can manage the side effect profile so these products are, are, these molecules are safe. Uh, and I think that uh, FDA has already put their cards on the table by granting uh, breakthrough therapy status. I think that, that says to me that FDA believes in these or, or believes in the potential, and now it's up to us to turn them into therapeutics. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for doing this again. If people want to learn about your company, where can they find you, essentially? Sybin.com. Sybin.com. You heard it there, folks. Well, thank you again, Doug, for this interview. Thank I had you, a lot of fun. Me too. Thanks very much. Watch our full interview with Doug Drysdale from Wonderland. Visit psychedelicspotlight.com.